Hi. Wow, thank you. So how's WordCamp so far? Great. Awesome. And because it's after lunch and I have a tradition of doing this, here we go. <laughs> okay, that's all I got. Okay. <laughs> Freaks people out. Okay. I love doing that. All right. See? It works. All right. Uh, as I was uh, introduced, I'm Adam Silver. This is a podcasting, um, it's, not a, it's a workshop, it's a demo, we'll see what it is. Um, if you wanted to share, oh, dang it, wrong thing. If you want to go and share that you're here right now, you can go to this website and share this socially. That'd be great, because social media is awesome. Unless you're orange. Okay, I'll stop. Um, so, real quick, what is a podcast? Anyone have the actual definition by heart besides me? Anyone know what a podcast is? So just in case you don't, here's the definition of a podcast. Uh, you can read it yourself. I don't need to read it to you because it's behind me and that'd just be awkward. I don't want to do this because I just did that. Okay. So a podcast technically is a episodic um, audio or video file or PDF technically as well. I'm old school. I think it's audio. Personally, video to me is video. It's not a podcast, but people do believe it is. And like, the definition does indicate that it can be. So that's the definition of a podcast. How, uh, we'll get to that. Who currently listens to podcasts? Okay, the other way around. Who has never listened to a podcast? Oh, don't be shy. One of you is lying. That's no, okay. Wow, so a lot of you have. Who has a podcast besides me? One, two, three, four, four, okay, three and a half people. All right, it's awkward. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of have one. Who's started one and stopped one? One, oh wow, yeah. How many episodes did you have, April? <coughs> one. <laughs> That's lower than the average. The average for um, pod fading is seven. If you get past seven, usually people are fairly golden. So, you know, so one, yeah, that's the problem. Six more to go, you would have been golden. So, all right. Here are the top 10 podcasts, actually, as of, I believe, uh, um, what did I say, the July, uh, just last month. I, it changes weekly and monthly. Those are the top 10. Any of those look familiar to anybody? A couple? Yeah. So I listen to, out of these, I listen to none. No, I listen to This American Life sometimes. But I average 35 hours a week listening to podcasts. I do not listen to the radio much at all. Um, just, it's depressing. So, okay. Simple, right? Stats. 29 million minutes uh, being produced every year. 2.5 million minutes a month being produced. 80,000 minutes a day. 55 recorded podcasts any given moment are being recorded right now. And just so you know, I have 155 more slides to go. No, I'm kidding. Um, about 45 slides to go. And after that, we'll take a quick five minute break. We are gonna record my podcast here. I'm gonna interview somebody up here, as you may have heard at opening remarks. And you'll see the process. I want you guys to show you how the sausage is made. I hate that statement, but it's the truth. And my show is a 15 minute show on average. And you'll see how long it takes. And I've, I haven't done, I've done the prep, but I didn't do the prep, because I want you to see the prep. Does that make sense? Okay, we'll talk about that. So anyway, some more stats. 49% of podcast listening is done at home, down from 51% of 2017, okay? 22% of people listen on while they're driving. Oh, they have the wrong slide, don't you? How about that one? That's better. 22% listen while driving. It makes the most sense because you're driving. What else are you going to do, right? I lived in Los Angeles for a majority of my life. People say, why did you move to North Carolina? Because it's not Los Angeles. Okay. <laughs> so that said, I was in traffic a lot. I listened to a lot of podcasts. So that's my reasoning. Um, people listen on average to six different shows. I listen to on average, I think I'm up to 24, 25. I used to be really keen. So the people who listen to podcasts, do you feel like you have to listen to every episode? Wow, I wish I was like that. Huh? Certain shows. Yeah. So for the longest time, I was like, I always felt like I had that number out there. It's like, you're, you're 14 shows behind. I'm like, oh my God. I've, I finally got over that. Little therapy was great. Really was. Now I'll skip weeks sometimes. I'm like, you know what? I'll, I'll look at the topic of the speaker and I may just move past it. So you don't have to listen to every episode, unless it's, of course, an episodic type of linear type show, right? And um, that's seven, so six shows in general they subscribe to, seven shows per week. I'm like tr three times that. All right, what do you think the most popular categories are? Anyone wanna venture a guess? Interest. Okay, second guess? Music. Third guess? Comedy. Interesting, psychology, okay. So you're all wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Religion. Right, and it changed. This actually, this actually went up. So, you, so I, I did this talk two years ago. It was like 35,000. This is the most popular categories. And this changes based also on region of country and world. Keep that in mind. This is U.S. based. Okay. So, religion and spirituality, spirituality are the top 16 major podcasts in, uh, in Apple. 58,000 podcasts are about religion and spirit, spirituality, society, culture, music, arts, education. Comedy is also super popular, but it's weirdly ranked differently. 
um, across the board within Apple. So there's also Stitcher Radio. There is, um, uh, what's the other one called? There's Google now, Google Play. There's a third I, or fourth one. I, there's a, I can't think of what it's called, but I'll come, they'll come back to me. So they all rank things differently. iTunes is still the biggest library. By the way, iTunes does not host music. Okay, you guys learned, you learned earlier from the class, uh, the who was in the previous podcasting session? Just a few of you, okay. So iTunes does not host anything. They're just a directory. You have to have hosting separately, okay. So podcasting grew 23% between 2016 and 2017, and it's growing every year about the same rate at this point, okay. What's driving podcasting? What do you think, what's the number one reason why it's growing? Anyone want to venture a guess? Time. Time. What do you mean by time? That's a deep question. Oh, interesting. Okay, well, that's one way to look at it. The other way is what's driving it is mobile. Okay, I was looking for mobile. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> because our iPhones, Apple phones, I mean, any phone these days has, once Apple puts the podcast app on the iPhone as a default standard, it went through the roof. Okay. It used to be you had to go get it. I don't use the iTunes app, uh, the Apple uh, OS app. Uh, they ruined it, in my opinion. I'm an, I'm an Apple fanboy through and through. I don't have a tattoo, but I'm really close. No. Um, but I used to like their app, it was just fine. And then they switched, they just made some changes and it's just terrible. So I use Overcast, so it's my favorite app. And I listen at 1.5 speed, um, and they take out gaps. If it's anything faster than 1.5, I get really like, excited, it's too much, I'm stressed. I'm already, I'm already like this as it is, so I can't take any more than me. Uh, one in four Americans have listened to, uh, between 12 and 54, to a podcast in the last month. So most of you have listened to podcasts, right? Everyone in this room, Everyone answered something, or they didn't answer at all, so I don't know, okay, so. Podcasts versus blogging, who has a blog? Okay, so a lot more people have blogs than podcasts. That said, we have 420 million active blogs, 520 million active podcasts. This is flipped, this used to be the different number. There's still room to grow. Think about the numbers of WordPress websites, 90 million websites, right? So people who do maintenance and dev work, we can't handle all of it. I can't handle 90 million, I can handle maybe a million of, no, I'm kidding. Um, That'd be a lot of work. So if you have a voice, if you want to say something still, you still have time to get into it. It's, you have not missed the boat in any stretch of the imagination. People are like, oh, it's come and gone. Podcasting's almost done. It's not, you know. The key is consistency, and I'll talk about that in a second. Okay, so the benefits. The benefits really are threefold, three or twofold. Um, connection to audience. It's the uh, rapport. People get to know you, right? It's easier for some. I don't want to blog. Plain and simple, I don't want to feel, take the time to write out 300 words, 600 words, 1,000 words every week. Some people love blogging and writing and using postcards. I'll stop there. <laughs> so, you know, so some people, I feel like it's easier for me to speak, okay? So that's just me. Um, and it's the I know you phenomenon, right? People get to know you, they know your voice. And I have two stories for you. One story is um, I was at a word camp in uh, Dayton, Ohio, three, four, year, four years ago. And I was talking to somebody, I was on a panel, and after the panel, I step off and I'm talking to people, and one guy comes up to me, and it's a circle of uh, seven or eight people. The panelists and the other people said hi, and want to say hi to us and thank us for whatever reason. And one guy comes across the circle, gets really close, I'm gonna do it to you, and does this. Shake my hand. Hi, I'm a big fan of your podcast. <laughs> it's awkward now, isn't it? Yeah. It's really <laughs> awkward, see? So, it was, I mean, I thought the guy was gonna kill me. Okay. So, but he liked my show, he's a huge fan. He is now one of my best friends. <laughs> <laughs> I keep people I like to know. So actually that's Kyle Maurer, he's the um, co-host of the other show I'm on. You know, but he liked the show, he had been a fan. You know, and so it's, they got to know me just based on my voice. Same word camp, next day I'm talking to somebody in the hallway and a gentleman walks past me and he might be where um, AJ is and turns around comes right back. I'm, I'm not wearing a lanyard, says, excuse me, are you Adam Silver? I'm like, yes I am. I listen to your podcast, I recognize your voice. Thank you for your show. I'm like, well, thank you. Mm -hmm. So you, it's, that happens a lot over time. It took about a year, year and a half to get there, but it does happen, okay? So it's, people know you, you know, because you're in someone's ears, that's the key, versus video where someone can kind of tune out, you're in someone's ears while they're doing the dishes, mowing the lawn, well, not mowing the lawn, folding laundry, child watching, you know, whatever you're doing, driving, you're in their ears and you're talking to them. And based on your topic, you can really connect with people, okay? So. Steps to success, this is the easy part. Super simple to be successful, I'm kidding. Okay. Consistency, number one reason, you have to be consistent, okay? Um, people ask me, and I talked about this yesterday at lunch, how do I know what to talk about? Passion, what are you passionate about, for one? Number two, if you have a topic, 
then you need to come up with subjects. Or you have a subject, you need to come up with topics. You don't need to come up with 100 right away, but you need to come up with about 20, 25. When I say 20, 25, if you did 25, that's every other week taking two weeks off for the holidays. If you can't come up with 25 topics in your subject before you start, you may not have the right show, okay? On top of that, you don't have to do it every week. I mean, you have to do it every week, yes. You don't have to wake up on a Wednesday and say, oh, I have to podcast. If you do that, you're in the wrong topic again. You don't want to feel like you have to do it. You want to feel like, you, oh, I get to do this today. You could also batch this. Like with writing blog posts, if the muse hits you to, to do four or five recordings on a Sunday, fantastic. Then schedule them out, right? How many people did not know you can schedule out blog posts? Okay, good. A lot of people don't know. You guys are awesome. You guys are really smart than the previous work camps I've been to. <laughs> This is only my first WordCamp this month. Okay. See what I did? Thank you. Thank you very much. How many people, real quick, how many people have been to more than five WordCamps? How many people have been to more than five WordCamps this year? Okay, more than, oh yeah, April, that's true. Damn. <laughs> April's here, okay, good enough, fair enough. How many people have been to more than 10 WordCamps this year? Okay. How many people are going to more than 10 WordCamps this year? Yeah. That's nice. Where, which one do you go? Where are you going? I'm going to talk there. Okay. So, secondary, secondary thing of success. Have a format for your show. Just to start the microphone and start talking, eh, may not be all that interesting. Have a format. In my opinion, you want to have a format. My show, Kitchen Sink WP, has a format. I have four segments. I have uh, upcoming, uh, in the news, upcoming events, or upcoming events in the news, um, the meat potatoes, which is segment two, like what I talk about the topic, and I have tip or trick of the week, tip or tool of the week. That's it. Short show, right? I have a format every week. It's consistent. Okay, so it's basic. And then I market it. How do you market it? Um, social media, I have guests. I don't do a lot of guests. Every guest is every four to six weeks, tops. Unless I say that to, on average four to six weeks because it's just not part of my show uh, consistently. But some people do interviews all the time. The problem with interviews is you rely on someone else to show up consistently if you're doing it every week, right? And schedules change. And then the audio quality, is a, it can be an issue if you're doing things through Skype or Zoom. So there's other technical things to think about. Okay. I'm gonna go back one thing real quick here. Um, success. Schedule the time you're gonna record. Schedule the time you're gonna re, um, that you're going to publish. My show comes out every Monday at 6 a.m. Eastern. Even when I was on the West Coast, I wanted the East Coast um, commute. 6 a.m. Eastern every Monday. So my show is due to be done tonight for tomorrow. I'm not up at, well actually I am up early now that I live on the East Coast, but I wasn't up at 3 a.m. to hit publish. I scheduled it. Okay, be consistent. My show has missed two release dates because I forgot to hit a category for my RSS feed. My fault. And I get tweets. Where's the show? People know my show on Monday. They run to my show. They trap. They go to the gym. They get accustomed to having. Remember back in the day before we had Tebow? Who, who remembers pre-Tebow days? Who remembers Betamax? Okay. Okay. The back row, like yeah, we're old. Okay. So we before you can record something and watch it later, you know, people had a schedule to watch certain shows. My show comes out Monday. People listen to my show on Monday. Simple. The reason I picked Monday, it's two days before my other friend's show. I want to beat him to the news. Okay, so I'm not going to lie to you. Monetization, making money at podcasting, so easy. Said nobody ever. Okay. <laughs> sponsors. So I have sponsors. I'm really picky on sponsors. I will not take a sponsor if it's about drugs, alcohol, um, pornography, obviously, um, anything that's inappropriate, uh, in my opinion. It's my show. Number two, it has to match the audience. My audience are podcasters, usually beginners or intermediate people in WordPress. If it doesn't match my audience, it's a money grab. I'm not interested. I average 1,000 downloads a week, okay? Uh, it's not a bad number. I mean, I've been in it for four years. And my audience respects that. They, they trust me, in my opinion. So I only take sponsors of things that I, tr that I think make sense and that I've used, okay? There's a secondary level of sponsorship of making money. It's affiliates. So, and I've done this, and it's, um, you know, and you, you may come to hear this in podcasting, if, you know, you'll, you'll notice it next time. So if I have an empty space, I don't have, I don't have sponsors every week. I didn't take sponsors for the first year. I just didn't want them. I wanted to build an audience with slow, slow and steady growth. Then I took them. And um, it's fine. I make, it's, it's easy money, technically. It's not extra money. There's no such thing as extra money, by the way. Totally different note. It's easy money. I say something for 30 seconds, I get $250, okay? Affiliates are different. So affiliates, it's a, it needs to be a win-win-win. So if you have a product and, and I'm an affiliate, I'm gonna send you a client, potentially. You're gonna give a discount and I'm gonna get a commission, right? But you're not paying me to say that. Because there's, there's a difference. Sponsorships, I'm being, I'm being paid to say their name. So I'm getting paid no matter what. No matter what happens on their end on selling something, it doesn't matter, I still get the money. 
It's good for me, it's a risky for them. It's like any other type of advertising, right? Um, the affiliate spot will be more like, I use this service, go to freshbooks.com, no, go to kitchensinkwp.com forward slash freshbooks, get 30 days free. Everybody gets 30 days free, right? But I use Freshbooks and I do trust it and I use it all the time. And I'll say this during the tax season or during the new year when people are trying to do their books, I'll mention that and I'll get a commission. That's the affiliate kind of way to make money as well. But again, I only do affiliate things for things I use consistently. Freshbooks, Nifty, uh, Nifty Quarter, you know, just certain things, uh, services I use, okay? All right, questions on monetization? And if you have questions, you by all means raise your hand or you can wait till the low in the end, okay? Tools, this is always people want to know the tools and you can come up and see the stuff after if you need to as well, okay? Hardware, so you need some hardware. Your hardware, like my studio looks like this. This is what you need. I'm totally joking. <laughs> you do not need this at all, okay? Um, I've been in rooms like that. An old, day, an old day job I had, my boss used to have that. I don't like him. So um, that's level one, right? Laptop, mic uh, headphone, with a USB headphone with a microphone. You can go that level. I personally do not record into my computer because computers crash, Macs and PCs. Things freeze, things make noise, fans turn on. I don't want to risk my computer stopping from the recording, okay? So at a base level, you can spend $25, and start recording into iTunes, into QuickTime audio file, pretty basic. Even on a PC, you can do something like this. Very inexpensive way to get in. Or you can step up and go to a better microphone, and the one on the far right, the little stand, the little triangle stand, that's um, not on my desk anymore, but that's this microphone. It's a ATR2100, Audio-Technica. I love this microphone. It's professional, it has XLR and USB. Okay, so I can do both. I can go right to the computer if I want, or I can go to my mixer. Okay, no mixer in this mix, in this picture, but I could, okay. Um, $67, so an ATR 2100. I'll have links, to, I'll, I'll share all the notes, all this stuff as well on Twitter and some places with my affiliate links to Amazon. Just kidding, I'm not kidding, I'm not kidding at all. I'm not gonna lie to you, okay. <laughs> Another level, level three, you can upgrade. You can go better microphone, mixing board, recorder, computer, okay. Uh, in this case, this microphone, this is like, this, like one of the standard like, high-end stuff, it's like $500 for that mic. That's a basic mixer, it's what I have here, similar model. And I have a recorder here as well, okay? And the reason I do this, so and you'll see, I think my next slide is, is this one. My next slide, this is how it works for me. I record microphone into the mixer, right? Um, uh, my laptop goes into the mixer, mixer goes into the recorder. Out of that recorder, I'll get out of the way for the photo ops, or I can go, with, out of the recorder, I get a WAV file. WAV file, I pull an SD card out, goes in my computer, right? And then I edit the file in Audition. So we'll talk about that in a second. The only difference here is when I record now, um, like we're doing a live recording here, so I have a second microphone, which I'm gonna use here. Um, and with my show with uh, Kyle, he's in through Skype, so he comes in through the computer. But I have an iPad I've added to it, so then he can listen to sound effects or people who've left messages for us. It's called a mix minus. So I mix in the iPad. iPad would go into the mixer. Let me do it this way. iPad would go into like one of these inputs, and then I would have an out that goes into another device that goes into my USB port here. And in the mixer, I can he hears it, but he doesn't hear himself loop back. He doesn't hear an echo to himself. It's called a mix minus. I mix it in, and I minus out his voice. Right? Once you get the concept, it's simple to do. It took me like six months to figure this out. Okay? I'm not that smart. I'm just really tall. Okay. <laughs> All right, so software. Any questions on hardware? I can go back real quick. Any questions on hardware? Okay. Again, you can spend, uh, someone asked me earlier, so you came up early and asked me how much to start. $67 microphone, um, you don't need the mixer. You can go right the microphone right into the computer. 65 bucks, 60, that's it. That's, uh, you can start that low or less. You, know? you wanna get a little bit more fancy, you can. You know, like I said, I just don't use my computer to record audio because I don't want things to crash. I like the, I like the separation of, of uh, church and state, if you will. Okay, <laughs> that was weird. All right, moving on, tools. Um, so like I said earlier, Libsyn is where I host my audio files. I pay 15 bucks a month, okay? Um, this is GarageBand, this is Adobe Audition, and this is oh, Audacity. Audacity, thank you. I use Audition, and I use Libsyn, I use Soundboard. And Soundboard is a little, I'll show this in a second. Soundboard is a um, piece of software where I can have sound effects or uh, my bumpers are there. I can play them from my computer, right? So I can play it off the computer in through the mixer to the recorder. I'm not sure they make it anymore, but there are other apps like it. Mine is still just, mine still works, so I keep using it. Until it stops working, I'll replace it, okay? Again, um, GarageBand comes with um, every Mac. 
Uh, Adobe Audition is part of the Adobe Suite. I don't pay for it. I have it for free. I'm, I'm grandfathered in for life, which is awesome. Um, I used to be a trainer at Apple a long time ago. Um, I did for them, and then because of that relationship, I had connections at Adobe. We would trade software and licenses. So all my connections at Adobe are gone, but I still have the licenses, so it works out well. All right, so, okay. Moving on. My workflow, and this is what we're gonna show in a second, so I'm gonna take you through this, but here's like my workflow, in essence. I pick a topic, I write the outline, I record, I light edit with Adobe Audition, I export the MP3. Um, there's some pieces missing in this, but you can take, you know, again, you don't have to take pictures, I will share this freely. Well, maybe for 99 cents, no. Um, there's, a lot, just, you know, there's a lot of steps in this, and there's actually some pre-steps to this as well. Um, there's some stuff that's newer. I'm a huge checklist guy. The reason you want a checklist is you want to be consistent. It's a great book called The Checklist Manifesto. Anyone read this book? Yeah, great book. It's, it's, it's fantastic. Highly recommend it. And if you have a checklist, then you get busy and you're doing super well, you can outsource this and say, here's how you do my show. Here's, here's my, here's my post-production, right? I'm getting to that point where I have two shows now. I'm looking to launch three to four more this year. Um, when's that gonna happen as far as the post-production and the editing? I wanna find someone, but here's what I want done so I can outsource that. So that's kind of how I do my show in a nutshell. We are now, it's only been 20 minutes, which is great. We're right on time, because I want to take the time now to show, do the interview, do the podcast. You have to be kind of quiet for part of it. Well, all of it, really. Um, imagine this is going to be a movie, like a talkie. Who remembers talkies? I'm just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. All right. So uh, my two shows are Kitchen Sink WP and Get Options, like I said. That's me, and that was me, literally on the phone. I've always liked to talk. Can you tell? So, uh, and I used to have blonde hair. I'm just happy I still have hair. So. And now we can do a producer show. We'll take a quick minute, couple of five minute break. But before we do a five minute break, anyone have any questions about the slides, about just in general podcasting and that stuff before we do the show part? Yes, in the back, yellow shirt. Well, I have a question back about the monetization. Sure. Talk about yeah. So I looked at my niche. I looked at WordPress, other WordPress podcasts. Um, so when I started my podcast four years ago, there weren't that many shows around. There were about four or five. Um, and actually, there were, there were at one point like 10, but half of them were gone already. They had pod faded. The other ones that were live, I looked at their stuff. Um, they weren't really taking sponsors yet because it was still kind of growing, right? It was only half of its life or a third of its life. Um, so then as people kind of came up, I looked at other people's fees on what they were charging for what they were offering and I stole their number. So there's another way to look at it. The analytics kind of showed as well. You want to have an audience of at least, you know, two, 300 downloads a week, minimum, or per, per episode, depends how often you do episodes. Um, and then you also, some people say it's 10,000 downloads a week to get, you know, $50 a show. It just depends. In my case, I looked at, um, I don't want to say my com competition, but I looked at my colleagues, what we were all kind of doing, and kind of just based on that. That's how, that's how I went on mine. Yeah. Everything's negotiable. Here's the thing. When I had a day job, up in, almost two years ago, I was working in social media marketing uh, full-time for a company, toxic, terrible company. Um, they're not going to ever hear this, which is great. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> I left to relaunch my business at Concierge. I did it on the side. Um, so when I had the day job, um, I didn't need sponsorship necessarily for one. <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> wow, this is not going to be good for the show. Hey, how are you doing? It's good. Um, <laughs> So I had, a, I had a sponsor opportunity. They took, they wanted a month. This is awesome, actually. It's kind of a funny story. They wanted four weeks back to back to back, which is, I'm like, okay, 250, it's $1,000. They said, can you do four weeks back to back? I'm like, let me move some things around for you. I'll let you know in a, within a week. A day later, I'm like, done. There was nothing to move around. <laughs> but I needed a, that appearance had to happen, right? So they, they bought a month, fantastic. And then they actually sponsored WordCamp, um, Los Angeles, 2016. And they were trying to grow their business. They were trying to grow their involvement in the WordPress community, which as you have to do sometimes. You have to spend money for marketing to get the name out, your branding out. Uh, and they do two, two they're a Snap ID, they do two-factor authentication. They're still around, it's pretty cool how it works. Um, and then they came to me after WordCamp and some of their marketing funds had depleted and they noticed I had a gap in my sponsorship. And sometimes I'll sponsor my own show, by the way. I'll sponsor Kitchen, uh, kitchen Sink, will be sponsored by Concierge WP, maintenance. So if I have a spot, I'll put my own in there, why not, right? And I'm honest, people know, some people, most people know it's, they're both me, doesn't matter. Um, they came to me after WordCamp Los Angeles, 2016 or 20, uh, 2016, said, hey, we know you had a gap, we would like to sponsor more, but our funds are less, would you give me a deal? Well, <laughs> I left the day job, yes I will. Money is money, right? At this point, I'm not dumb, 
much. So yeah, I mean, I said, I'll give you a deal if you give me three months guaranteed. And they said, okay, and I said, and, before they finished, I said, and I want to put you in every other week for three months, because that way I can sell other spots, and the audience doesn't get burnt out and listen to the same commercial spot. And some are gonna be produced, like pre-produced. So my wife does voiceover work sometimes for me, so I, I hired her for really low money, actually, no money. Um, <laughs> she, did a, she did a recording, two versions of it. I wrote the script, they approved it, and then I, I would do a live read. So every, you know, every other week, they'd have a spot, but one would be just me push a button, one would be me reading some bullet points. So, it's negotiable. Everything's negotiable. Yeah, I'm not gonna turn down, I gave him, I gave him a deal, whatever it was, I think I knocked off, you know, 20%. Sure, still if not, not hard money, so. Who had another question before we move on to the next section? We have, we're, good on, we're plenty of good on time, so I'm, I'm good, I'm happy, so. Questions, questions, AJ? You know you have one, I know you're, you're chomping. No, anyway. yes sir. Right. So the question is, any questions, uh, any resources for free podcast hosting? Um, short answer, no. Medium answer, um, the issue being, A, you pay what you get for, right? You get what you pay for, get what you pay for that way, it makes more sense. B, uh, analytics, you wanna see stuff eventually. So Libsyn, a lot of people, I've been using Libsyn. It's uh, one of the default standards. They just had podcast movement. Anybody go to podcast movement a couple weeks ago? There was a big uh, conference in Philly. So if you're into podcasting, podcast movement is where you want to go. I've been asked to go many, a couple years in a row. Hasn't worked out for my calendar, unfortunately. Um, I know the guys who created it. It spun off from New Media Expo in Vegas like four years ago. So, um, so I, I, I pay 15 bucks a month per show. So, and that gets me some pretty good stats. If I pay 20 a month, I get actually worldwide stats. I can actually get more, um, more depth, but for right now I'm okay with the, with the 15 bucks a month. What you don't want to do is you do not want to host your, uh, your podcast on your own site. Don't put video or audio on a WordPress shared server, please. <laughs> Even though shared services and shared hosting will say, unlimited bandwidth, they're lying. And I know this because when I used to teach WordPress Essentials, when I taught stuff online or in person in Los Angeles, uh, one of my students put a video. I said that the homework was embed a video on your page. So he embedded the video by putting the video on my server, because he got a sandbox through my server. And I get, an, I get like text messages all night long at three in the morning, bandwidth, bandwidth, you know, yeah, it's because there was you know, a 20 megabyte file on my server being played you know, through YouTube, you know, but, it was, but it was, actually it was hosted on my server. Even though shared hosting says unlimited for a lot of these companies, it's not truly unlimited. There is a point they're gonna say, hey, hey, hey it's enough. So, right. sorry, I don't have, yeah, for free hosting, couldn't, couldn't help you. There are other ones, There's, uh, I mean, you can do SoundCloud, I guess they're kind of free. Uh, Lipson is paid, uh, Podbean is paid, uh, so you know, there's a handful of them, but I use Lipson, it works, it's easy. Their interface, um, their UI, and you'll see it today, it sucks, but other than that, it's fine. Okay. Anyone else? You had a question, there was one I thought here? Yes, yeah, you, you in the back. Um, in addition to the podcast itself, do you have a WordPress website that you have to manage that has synopsis? Yes, <laughs> so great question. So How the question. And I'm going to show you all that as well. I'll show you the, but the question is, uh, do I have a WordPress website? I do, yes. You do not have to at all. If you don't want to have a website to go with any of this, you don't have to. You can just record the show, edit it, upload it to Libsyn, for example, and you need a, a feed. Did, did you, was uh, in the previous class, was there talk about feeds, the RSS feed? A little bit. So I'm not going to get into that. That's the technical side. You have to set up an RSS feed. You can do it on your own WordPress site. I use FeedBurner through Google. And there's always talk about them shutting it down. Well, if they shut it down, I'll cross that bridge. But you don't even need to go through them. You can actually go through Libsyn for all of this. And Libsyn actually have a website for you if you want. Some of these services offer that. I have my own WordPress website. And I manage it based on every podcast gets a post, technically, and show notes. And the category of podcast, that it knows to go to Libsyn, FeedBurner, FeedBurner then sends it to iTunes. iTunes, they, 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 they're, they're talking, they're always like, okay, what, anything new here? Anything new here? Oh, new, every Monday it's new, uploads it. So is it embedded? Can people listen to your podcast from the website? They can. No, actually, if they're li so technically, yes. If they're listening, if, they're, if the st it's a stream from Lipson, yes. So it counts as a download. 
Yeah, for a long time I wasn't sure. I'm like, well, if they're listening to the, on the, my desktop, I don't know. But it does count because that link is, I'm not uploading the MP3 to my server. It's just that link. You'll see that too. Yeah. And sometimes I've made the mistake where I'll look at my show notes, I mean, I'll look at the post, and um, this happened actually on Get Options podcast two weeks ago. It didn't come through. That show comes out Wednesdays. It used to be Mondays also, but I'm like, that's too much work for me. So I make that show Wednesdays. And it didn't come in at 6 a.m. I'm like, where is it? And I look at the show notes, and I see the URL in the show notes, not where it's supposed to be in the plugin. I use um, Burberry. So and I'll, I'll show you how that works. So, OK. So we're good on questions? Oh, you had one right here. And then we'll, last one. Yeah. I see people using YouTube almost like a podcast. Mm -hmm. It's a search engine, and it has its own SEO. So ironically enough, so the question is, oh, I forgot to mention one more thing. Uh, the question is using YouTube uh, for audio for podcasting. Absolutely. I'm actually in the process right now of taking all 231 episodes, converting them to MP4s. Um, the video, I say the video, will be my image of that show that week, just as a static image for the, for the duration. The benefit is people find you on YouTube for if you're, you know, based on what your keywords are, based on your link. Yeah. And then the goal is get them back to your website, ideally subscribe. Right. So YouTube is another search engine. I'm actually about in the, in the process right now doing this. I'm about to hire either my daughter or not my daughter to do this for me. Don't know. We'll see. She, she's like, I'll do it for uh, 15 an hour. I'm like, how about 50 bucks? So it's like 15 an hour. Like, she's like, how long will it take? I'm like, too much, too long. So, so she'll make, she's 17. She's like, all of a sudden she's like, I just kind of gave her rich dad, poor dad. She's like, okay, how do I make this money? So, all right. Okay, cool. We're gonna take a quick five minute break. Uh, if you need to go to the restroom, uh, great. And then we're gonna, do my show. This is going to be really cool, I think. Okay. All right.